Good evening, everyone, and, and welcome to the Hereford Township Board of Commissioners meeting. It is July 10th, 2017, and the Board of Commissioners met in executive session prior to this meeting to discuss a real estate matter and a legal matter. Uh, if everybody would please, oh, Mr. I do that every month, don't I? Mr. Secretary, would you please take the roll? Certainly. Mr. D'Amelio? Here. Mr. McCluskey? Here. Mr. Siegel? Here. Mr. Lewis? Here. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Here. Mr. Wexler? Here. Mr. Oliva? Here. And Mr. Connell? Here. For all those that can, please rise. And uh, Pastor Johansson from Temple Lutheran will lead us in prayer. Let's pray. God, we thank you first for the gift of community. When we can come together and the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. We thank you for those who work together in this community to make this township and to make our world a better place. God, as you know, we are still in the midst of the greatest public health crisis this area has ever seen in our heroin and opioid epidemic. We thank you for the work of our EMS, our police, for all those trying to manage this issue. We thank you for recovery groups, and we pray that your spirit may move through this township, through our nation. We may seek relief. We pray for the 1,700 plus people living in poverty in this township. Help us to remember them and to be mindful that things are not always perfect, even here in Havertown. We thank you for the work of our food pantries uh, and all those organizations that seek to feed those in need. We thank you for groups that come together and hold our leaders accountable. We pray that our commissioners may, le may lead with equity and justice, that grant them wisdom and grant them courage. We thank you for their service to this township. God bless us in all that we do, that we may be a blessing. And we pray in your most holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, number two on the agenda tonight is a, is a proclamation. Mr. Holmes, you have the floor. You have the Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, I'm just going to ask two of my colleagues to join me. If Kevin McCluskey, uh, the Commissioner of the Third Ward, would join me, um, as well as uh, Commissioner D'Amelio uh, from the First Ward. Commissioner D'Amelio's experience in zoning uh, makes him a longtime confidant, familiar with uh, Eddie Fasuli, uh, whose daughter we're honoring. And uh, Kevin is uh, in whose ward uh, the Kasulis now live. Um, they moved several years ago. I'm not going to go so far as to say they upgraded their commissioner, but they at least um, got one from the right party, as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, so 19 years ago, uh, my wife and I um, had the good fortune of moving to uh, Chestnut Avenue uh, in the home we now live in. And our backyard neighbors uh, were the Kasulis. Um, and uh, we met their three-year-old daughter, Lauren, at that time, uh, and had the joy of watching Lauren grow up before us. Um, as a politician, we say a lot of things on the record, and we always, we always wonder uh, whether those words are ever going to come back and haunt us, or whether someday we'll be able to brag about the words we said. So let me read words that I wrote five years ago about Lauren Kasuli. I wrote, as an elected official in our own Haverford Township, Delaware County, Pennsylvania, I have the opportunity to interact with some of our finest young men and women as students, athletes, volunteers, and future leaders. Lauren stands out among them. 
I have the utmost confidence that Lauren Kasuli will not only be a fine addition to the U.S. Air Force Academy, but like her father before her, will be an outstanding officer. Great pleasure to invite the Kasuli family to come up so that I may present property to Second Lieutenant Lauren Ellen Kasuli. They're not done yet, I still get to read it. <laughs> Whereas the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, wishes to recognize notable achievements made by young adults in our community. And whereas this board would like to congratulate Second Lieutenant Lauren Ellis Kasuli, a proud graduate of Coopertown Elementary School, the Haverford Middle School, and the Academy of Notre Dame de Namer High School in 2013. And whereas Second Lieutenant Kasuli graduated on May 24, 2017, from the United States Air Force Academy with a Bachelor of Science degree in civil engineering and received a commission as a second lieutenant in the United States Air Force. And whereas Second Lieutenant Kasuli followed in the proud tradition of her father, Edward Kasuli, a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy in 1991, who served as a submarine officer. And whereas while at the Air Force Academy, Second Lieutenant Kasuli flew solo in a T-53 Cirrus aircraft in the powered flight program, led two flights of cadets and high school students through construction training, and was selected to the Academy Wing staff as a cadet lieutenant colonel in charge of all cadet wing and group one major training events. And whereas Second Lieutenant Kasuli will continue her flight training to pilot C-17s, also known as Globe Masters. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Haverford, County of Delaware, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, wish to congratulate Second Lieutenant Lauren Ellis Kasuli, United States Air Force, and join her parents, Edward and Nicole Kasuli, in wishing her the best of luck in all her future endeavors, service to our great country, and in expressing great pride in all her accomplishments proclaimed this 10th day of July, 2017. <laughs> Front and center, please. <clears throat> Would you like to say anything? Eddie. Thank you. Does she want to say anything? No. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. President. You are welcome. Well, she's going from a single prop plane that takes off at a maximum of uh, 3,000 pounds up to a four turbofan jet that lifts off at 585,000 pounds. <laughs> that is incredible. Incredible. All right, number three on the agenda, uh, construction manager update. The construction manager is in here, Mrs. Widop. Are you? Yep. Um, the board should have received a copy of the monthly status mm -hmm. report last week. Um, we are 14 weeks left in the construction. We're about 50, almost 52 weeks into the project. We've spent about seven and a half million dollars on the work that's been completed, so that's just over 50% of the total budget for the project. Um, 
and your contingency funds are at 47 percent of the contingency line um, do some paving in the lower level lot that's new the base course is there the, the uh, binder course is down and be able to utilize that parking area um, while they continue to do the work. The, most of the glazing is in. There's some uh, windows in the stair towers that have to be constructed, and then the second floor windows have to be finished. Uh, the elevator comes next week, so we are looking pretty good to have the police into the building in September. September. The beginning or probably towards the end, it doesn't know. Um, give or take. Date at this give point, or, it's the middle of the month. <laughs> We get right after Labor Day, but um, but we'll get there. <laughs> okay, and then the Any questions. Nope. Thank you very much. Uh, next on the agenda, EAC update presentation. Peter Poganisi. Hello, I'm uh, Peter Polianisi, co-chair of the Environmental Advisory Committee. I want to thank the board for requesting that EAC update the township's progress in meeting the Climate Action Plan goals. Um, we're fortunate to have two long-term Haverford residents leading this effort who are also highly qualified professionals in the field. One is Steve Clark, who is not here tonight. He's volunteered his time in the past for EAC. Uh, on conservation and climate issues. He's an energy efficiency consultant, PhD, and professional engineer. Uh, currently manages the PICO uh, commer uh, Small Commercial Smart Ideas Incentive Program uh, run by ICF International, encouraging businesses and municipalities to conserve uh, with the objective of saving 55 gigawatt hours per year. That is gigawatt, 55 million kilowatt hours per year, as you're used to on your bill, every year until uh, 2021. Uh, he's managed uh, similar multifamily energy programs for PSENG um, and uh, very well qualified in the field. Rob Graff, who is on the EAC and is presenting tonight on our proposed approach for updating uh, where we are versus the plan, uh, manages the Office of Energy and Climate Change Initiatives for the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission. Um, in addition to reducing energy use and greenhouse gas emissions, the initiative is the region for long-term impacts of a changing climate. He's got a Master's of Public Affairs and Urban and Regional Planning from Woodrow Wilson School at Princeton. Um, and among his many professional roles, he's on the National Academy of Sciences, Transportation Research Board, Task Force on Climate Change. He's a, a governor's appointment um, to the Commonwealth's Climate Action Change Advisory Committee and serves on the city's Climate Change and Health Advisory Group. He also happened to be one of the stakeholders who were involved in providing input on the 2008 Haverford Climate Action Plan. So Rob, come on up. Rob is going to present. Good evening. I, uh, as a uh, uh, someone who works on regional planning, I know that it's local government where the action takes place. I want to thank all of the commissioners for your service uh, to the community and to the region. I particularly want to thank uh, Commissioner McGarity, who has served, I've uh, been a township president for 17 years, and he served as my commissioner for, the, for that period of time. I also thank Commissioner Lewis for uh, appointing me to uh, the climate change, to the um, EAC, and I uh, just wanted to say hello thank to you. Commissioner Connell, who I've met several times at the Penfield neighborhood uh, last week. Um, I come here tonight with uh, a request uh, to, uh, to the board to help evaluate the township's progress to date towards the goal stated in the 2008 Climate Change Action Plan. So this is what we're wanting you all to help us do, to uh, help us get the historical energy use for township buildings, some information on the building characteristics, and some limita limita limited information on township vehicles. Uh, as uh, Peter noted, some EAC volunteers will carry out all the analysis on this information and report back to the commissioners. 
Uh, why is it timely to do a uh, climate action update now to sort of see where we are on this? There's a lot of resident interest in local action as federal uh, action in this area of greenhouse gas emissions reduction and climate change has declined. In 2008, uh, the commissioners unanimously approved the uh, uh, Climate Change Action Plan, uh, which had a goal of a 30% greenhouse gas emissions reduction by 2020. And it'd be useful for us, I think, to figure out where we are, particularly in the township's own operations. Uh, and one of the uh, points of the action plan was to monitor and evaluate progress. There's been a lot of accomplishments to date. In fact, uh, Lori Whittup just spoke about the uh, work being done on the uh, very energy efficient design of the, um, the new township buildings. And there's a lot of really great things to report, but we don't have any formal measurement of that to date that uh, would be very helpful in that. Uh, we're focusing particularly on the government sector because about uh, because that's what the township uh, commissioners and, and the school board, which we'll talk a little about too, have control over. Uh, although this is a small part of the total emissions in the township, it sets the tone for how township residents can, uh, can reduce their emissions, particularly what the township has done with its buildings can be very effective in helping uh, businesses and, and residents reduce the energy use in their buildings. Uh, about three quarters of the, the blue section there, about three quarters of the uh, emissions, greenhouse gas emissions from the government sector is from the buildings that the government sector manages. And the other, another 20% is from the vehicle fleet and a small amount is from street lights. And when you as a township, uh, as a township save energy, you're showing taxpayers that you're really attentive to spending because energy costs money. Uh, so the first goal proposal is to review the 2008 plan with a focus on public facilities. There's been a lot of investments since 2008 uh, the township is working on LED street lighting, which uh, saves a lot of energy compared to the incumbent street lighting. Uh, there's a lot of new facilities that are designed to the uh, LEED standards. The school has done a lot of facility upgrades. The stadium has had some upgrades, and there's been an urban tree planting program as well. So let's measure and report on our progress. It can be really nice material for commission newsletters and for the township website to talk about what the township has done in, in putting these investments together and how it's uh, not only saved energy, saved money, and reduced greenhouse gas emissions. But we can't do that without getting some information on the buildings. Uh, the, these are the facilities with the largest savings. Uh, we understand that, that the school district and the library are responsible for their buildings, and we're going to look to them for their data. But for the residents of the township as a whole, this is just the government that manages these things. And so we think it's important to, to update these all. Um, there's a uh, free program, excellent program, sort of the state-of-the-art program called uh, Energy Star Portfolio Manager, which is a tool that's uh, used widely throughout uh, business and government to compare uh, building performances with peer facilities. You benchmark a building, and if it scores 100, it's the best building in that category, like a library or a police station. If you score zero, it's the worst building in that category, and it's energy use intensity. And this is by type of building and by region of the country. So you'd be comparing yourself to similar buildings in this part of the country, the Mid-Atlantic region. Um, to do this, we need to compile historical and current data from 2008 until now uh, elect on, elect on the energy use, electricity, natural gas, oil, and propane, and on some basic facility data, sort of the size of the building, what it's used for, its operating schedules, and also on transportation fuel use. Uh, then we can compare the present with the past, and we can compare the, how the township uh, has done compared to its peers and to the goals it set for itself in 2008. Uh, and then the township can publicize the successes and tell residents and businesses in the area how they can uh, learn from them to fix their own, uh, to save energy in their own operations by simple things that the township has done, fixing, pulling cracks, fixing leaks, changing the lighting technology, improving on the heating and cooling systems. Uh, and then after this benchmark is done, there's some other things we want to ask about, we want to try to assess for things that weren't available in 2008. For instance, right now we know there's an opportunity of moving the township at no additional cost to 100% renewable energy. Uh, quick analysis that uh, S Steve Clark did, looking at some bills, shows the red line there is what PICO's price to compare is, and then the blue are all 100% renewable energy that's below that. PICO's Smart Energy Choices Program offers a guaranteed 7% below the price to compare uh, for, some, for some, some renewable energies. Uh, also, there may be some opportunities 
for vehicles, uh, for instance, an electric police motorcycle, which is available now, is something that we'd want to look into and have the township evaluate. And the Ford Fusion is uh, producing a hybrid police cruiser in this fall, uh, which has a lot lower operating costs, up to $3,500 per year per vehicle, because uh, it uh, doesn't burn as much fuel while it's idling, uh, and also has less downtime for fueling. Um, so the summary of what we're looking for is to uh, evaluate the facility's energy use and costs and using volunteer time from EAC members, working with the finance staff to obtain the data, which you should all you should have, because it's simply uh, the billing data is on the bills, uh, and using the free Energy Star Portfolio Man Manager tool with an initial focus on the, uh, how the municipalities, uh, buildings, and facilities have compared versus the goal set in 2008 and also review other sectors such as in the school district uh, and maybe some residential sector as a whole to sort of just get a general sense of how we're, how we're uh, performing in this area. Uh, and basically get some data that will allow the township to tell their story with some real data, real progress that they can show. And we might even be able to identify some new or emerging opportunities that have a good mm -hmm. return on investment for the township. Uh, there's some other climate issues that, uh, that the EAC wants to raise, noting that the we realize that climate change is already happening. Uh, you've, Township has already embarked on a lot of work to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. As you probably know, the Department of Defense, the CIA, FEMA, and most other federal agencies, as well as states and coastal cities, are already planning for the costs of uh, climate change, uh, such as uh, paying for disasters, this flood insurance subsidies that are likely to raise over time. And, uh, you know, it's always better to plan now uh, rather than to um, plan after you, uh, when you, after you should have acted. Um, I think there's going to be some uh, other people speaking later on some of these issues. Is that right, Peter? Uh, so, you know, although we know the township as a government is doing quite well, we're not quite sure. We want a little bit more about, to learn about what uh, residents may do and then looking at some resolutions, which I think there's some resolutions before the uh, council tonight, if I recall. Mm -hmm. uh, and so again, what we recommend is that we uh, look at calendar year 2016 uh, data to update the greenhouse gas emissions inventory that uh, using data that will be, that we hope to get from the finance and administration department of the township. And then uh, over time we can uh, advise the Board of Commissioners on uh, how to communicate the township's actions to, to the residents and better inform the public on what they can do to help with this. Uh, I believe that is the last slide. So any questions I can I'd be able to answer for you? No. Gentlemen, any questions? No, I just have a comment. I want to thank Noel for meeting with me. He's in the audience here. Uh, him and I had some coffee. I could have talked to him probably for hours, uh, but he enlightened me on the uh, Paris Agreement, which um, which I had stated earlier I didn't know much about in the last commissioner's meeting, but uh, I firmly believe now that we should have stayed in that agreement for uh, a number of reasons. But um, according to Noel, he, he gave me some uh, uh, unbiased facts and one is in 2016 wind energy growth globally China is at 43 percent and the reason why I bring up China is because we talked about in in the Paris Agreement how China wasn't committed to uh, to the agreement but here they are at 43 percent the United States is at 50 percent Germany's at 10 India is at 6.6 .6, and Russia was not even mentioned so um, there are things that that are that that are obviously good and need to get better and I don't, I don't want to waste more time with that but um, I want to thank him and you know he's a great source of information and so I recommend if anyone has any questions to seek them out these gentlemen really are, are on top of it and Jim Marie, good to see you how are you good to see you do I call questions or is there someone I see a question no um, well, as a young kid let him I was okay. going to say, with the I, I understand, but you can't take questions from the audience. Well, he can you can go come up. But well, we will allow this young gentleman. Yes. Uh, on the part of <coughs> he's here. So he, he, he does look part. like he does look like a commissioner, doesn't he? Yeah, he looks a lot. <laughs> What's your name? Ryan. Ryan, go up to the podium there. You can speak. 
Go up and speak into the mic, Ryan. Oh, I don't know what's coming. Get ready for this, but uh, will the new building be using solar power? I don't know the answer to that. Someone from the no. township might know will the new no. building be using yes, solar, power? solar power? Yes, it's, it's not. I don't believe so. No. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, that's what he is. One of the things no, that the township is looking at and actually is working with a, a consultant is whether or not we can use the alternate fuels grant program to install solar canopy on the parking lot and use that for charging electronic vehicles free of charge to residents who might be parked at the lot. Um, the building is not solar powered. Peter, are you coming back up for anything? Thank you. Thank you, Rob, very much. So uh, there, there are others uh, who I think are going to speak in the Citizens Forum about um, CCL and uh, resolutions. And we didn't really want to speak to that. We really wanted to just focus on uh, the uh, doing this update on want an status. update on your okay right and um, you know there are we we certainly would advise you on interim measures that you could take before we're done you know you saw some of the good options that I think are up there um, thank you again for being so receptive to everyone's input it's I echo your statement from last week I think it's great that everyone's involved I think uh, EAC is very eager to get public uh, involvement in our efforts. One of our tasks is outreach on climate change and on getting the public to act. Um, and um, the township has done a lot of good things and there's every one of you can do some good things. We've been encouraging um, our own members to explore uh, purchasing renewable power, which as you can see from the presentation, could be purchased for less than PICO's price to compare. And I invite all the commissioners to consider it, make yourselves good examples and communicate that to people that it is, it is possible, it is not more expensive, uh, and you can really make a difference in that regard. So thank you for your time. Peter, thank you very thank you. much. Next on the agenda, we have the Township Auditor Update. Good evening. I've reviewed the expenditures for the period commencing June 13th and ending July 10th. I raised a series of seven questions to the Township Finance Director. All of my questions were answered to my satisfaction. Therefore, in my opinion, there were no irregularities for the period in question. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, number five on the agenda is Police Department uh, Crime Update. Chief. Thank you, Commissioner. For the month of June 2017, we issued 344 parking tickets, 359 traffic citations, 203 written warnings. There's a sex offense in decent assault in a wild, wild lot of 33 East Eagle Road. It was uh, investigated, store video re reviewed. There was no evidence of crime that happened there. A sex offense of rape at Lancaster Avenue at the college, no prosecution, no evidence of a, to support a crime. A robbery at the retail theft of the Giant. Uh, turned, it was a retail theft turned into a robbery. Uh, the uh, uh, people who uh, did the uh, uh, theft uh, pulled a knife on one of the employees. Uh, a police pursuit uh, commenced, and, and we arrested two suspects in West Philadelphia. Uh, we had a burglary in Powder Mill Lane. Domestic related suspect was arrested at Carroll Road. We had a couple of burglaries down along Township Line and, and along Carroll Park. Uh, entry via dog door. A firearm was taken. Uh, Lancaster Avenue Bryn Mawr cleaning uh, cleaners entry via the rear window. When the bar is cut and removed from scene, money was taken from two registers of Forward Road, entry via side window, uh, TV and cash and a laptop were taken. Uh, Myrtle Avenue, uh, entry via the rear, rear door, and that was also uh, a family member related to burglary. There was an attempt on the 217, uh, I'm sorry, on 619 and 626 on Winter Park Lane. 
for the same resident. The suspect pushed open screen windows on both weekends. No entry was gained. Uh, on Ormond Avenue uh, on 629, a suspect was arrested. We had a uh, total of 11 thefts and attempted thefts from vehicles. Uh, police on patrol uh, uh, arrested two people. Seven of them were cleared. Uh, most of them were down in the uh, eighth ward. Um, and then we had canine uses, 12 canine usages in the area. We had uh, eight of them were AOJ and the rest were uh, Haverford Township uh, uses. So that's my report. Any questions? Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Number six on the uh, agenda is uh, commissioner committee updates. Are there any commissioner committee updates? Mr. President. Mr. Siegel. I had submitted, and it's part of the agenda. I had, we had talked about this over the last fall, and I promised to sort of create a proposal, and it's included with the materials, which is a process for addressing applicants for boards and committees. In the past, uh, we have had what I'll call a fairly loose process so that um, we didn't always have um, resumes from people who wanted to be reappointed. We, then there were questions last year when we delayed because of openings. Um, people didn't always know who they were. So what I've drafted for discussion is what is before you, which essentially says that the township would advertise openings uh, around September 1st, give people two months to apply, and the applications would say, their names, their information, provide a resume regardless of whether they were seeking reappointment or a new appointment, and then come November, the board would determine whether in addition to interviewing uh, new applicants, we'd want to interview prior applicants who are seeking reappointment. This would create, I think, a process that would eliminate sort of the confusion and sometimes uh, you know, I, I, I think sort of unnecessary discussion and dispute among us as to who were, who was applying, what they're applying for. At times I had nothing but a name on an email uh, that some person was seeking reappointment and I didn't know who he or she was. And I don't think that's a way we should be proceeding. So this creates a working framework to assure that we're, we all know what the process is, everyone's treated equally. Um, and then we determine, you know, just like we would at any other point in the following year, January, who we appoint. But um, I provided it, there is a hypothetical timeline for this year if we were to adopt this. Uh, but I think it's time that we sort of formalize the process and eliminated the situation in which, uh, you know, we don't always know who people are or what they're applying for or what they're, they're doing, so it asks for a resume and a letter of interest and even provide their name, address, and phone number, which we didn't always have for these people. So if any of us wanted to talk to someone, I, we couldn't always do it. Um, and I open it up for discussion uh, among the board, but that's why I asked to have it included in the materials. Now, uh, we'll assume that if we enact this, this is what everybody would go by because it always seems like an exception comes up. That's the idea that, that we standardize every, things for a change. Um, I do see on item uh, uh, number six, any applicant who does not appear for an interview without good cause would not be considered for appointment. Um, mm -hmm. Good cause, it, it kind of sounds a little vague there. What's, I mean, that that, opens that I up think to it's up to the board to determine. I, I, we, can't, we can't determine every eventuality, but we've had situations where people who we're interested just don't show and if they just no show and they don't have a reason you know an emergency or something like that there's a real question to me as to whether there's a sufficient interest to appoint that person or reappoint that person if we were um, looking at an applicant for reappointment so I think we need to have some process in place where you know we can determine you know there's whatever the situation is but I don't know how we would easily uh, sort of have defined good cause until the circumstance arises. You know, there's a family emergency, someone's sick, uh, whatever. Well, those are one, actually one of the three things I have down here. I see because a lot of these other uh, line items do have definition. And, and that one just seems to be a, a little bit open air. Like if it is for personal, is it illness, 
I work think related. But if what we're looking for is a simple phone call, then perhaps we could just put in there if an individual does not contact you know, the, the Township Commissioner's Office. I, this is a discussion item interview. for me, so I'm, I open it up to whatever. You know, As part of that discussion, that's, that's what I'm saying should be added in there. Well, can we put this to a work session? I wanted to, but we were so coming no up. We didn't have a meeting this month. I think we should ha we need to have this in place sufficient time to to do something. Um, and I unfortunately completed it so. right after yes, the last have, work yeah. session. Did, but we have we, we have, have a work session August. August yeah. yeah. Right. So we have so this, this is now. this is presently on the agenda as a discussion item. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. Under, well, let's under six, so we can either discuss it now or we can move it to. The work session or do both the next work section you do both yeah. yeah we could we could so i gave my two cents is there anybody else here on the board that um, just for kind of housekeeping purposes would this be in the nature of a resolution that we pass or would it be an ordinance that we adopt i would suspect it's a resolution but i would resolution, yeah i think defer to the solicitor yeah and i, I think in the in the form of a resolution, it gives us the kind of wiggle room to deal with good cause. I, I appreciate your point, Mr. President, about the concern about good cause, but any of us who deal with any kind of employment issues and things like that and contracts understand, we, that it generally understood that you say, you know, you won't be fired without good cause. Um, you, you, you won't be considered unless you, you know, miss this interview for good cause, that it, it, it's, it's, um, it's not something we're going to apply arbitrarily. Somebody who just, um, who doesn't make any one of three, you know, let's say potential interview dates that we do in December and, and, um, and, the, and the only way we know they're not going to come to the three interviews is because they call and say on all three times they can't make it. I, I'm not sure that's going to satisfy good cause, whereas on the last day we have six inches of snow, we might end up with a lot of people who can't make the, make the appointment. So I, I wouldn't want us to try to make this thing too detailed, especially since it's in the nature of a resolution. As you can see, though, there has quite a bit of detail in it already well and very specifics we want a resume we want people to give us a paragraph as to why they I want don't to want to get into it like board. an argument on what is good cause at the time that the person is oh, I, that's yeah not good no cause no no, no I hear you but I think I think um, to some guidelines right but I mean the one you know we'll ultimately I mean any five members of this board are always going to be the ultimate arbiters of any dispute on this board and mm -hmm. so I figure um, it's never going to get so so contentious that we can't. I just think it's never going to be a close call. Okay. Um, and if it's a close <laughs> call, we all have stated over and over numerous times we want more people than fewer people to to volunteer for and be considered for our boards. There's so. nothing on here that we cannot work out. Right. Exactly. So. Yeah. I um, I conceptually agree with with this I think it's uh, a good idea Prob probably long overdue in terms of, uh, of something we should have impl implemented a long time ago but uh, any any suggested change I might make is four is 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 um, I guess number four I would actually take this a step further and require that any anybody up for reappointment uh, for any board of commission be um, required to submit their cred credentials and their and come in for interview. Um, I'd like to know what you know, how many meetings they've attended, what um, you know, what they feel they've accomplished on the board, and uh, what their you know kind of vision is going forward. So, I would I would actually make this a requirement that all anybody uh, being considered for any position be um, interviewed by this board it would be the only recommendation I would have. I don't have. A, I think that's a board determination. But so I, I would just I would just make it a requirement is what I'm saying rather than make it a discretion just make it a requirement that anybody yeah. except for reappointment be, be what I did suggest is that if we're going to interview people for reappointment in here it's all or none I don't think this board should be picking and choosing because that's led to some of the problems we've yeah. had but that's my opinion I, I yeah, and actually, that. That is, yeah. That is. I mean, you raise a good point. That what four might result in is a bunch of mini elections, yeah. uh, mini votes in November as to who we're going to keep and who we're not going to keep. And frankly, we shouldn't do that. No. We shouldn't even telegraph that. I agree. It should be only done in January. And, and I would agree that, um, that we should just say across the board, 
three appointments. I mean, most of our most of our positions are for multiple years. I yeah, mean, there's no five years. So inconvenience yeah. for a person who has to show up five years after they were appointed to come back and yeah. express in person their interest in serving again. I mean, I think our shortest ones maybe are the three are the right. one year oh, ones, one year, but yeah. that's those are individual commissioner appointments that aren't subject to elect, to uh, yeah. board approval anyway. So I don't think we interview for citizens advisory and. But everybody else has at least a three-year term, right? Yeah. yeah. And it, although we're appointing as a group. Yeah. Um. Then if there's... Commissioner? Yeah, just a, a thought. Um, oh. <clears throat> if we're, we're scheduling this all out and writing it all up, um, it seems that beyond Dan's uh, proposal for the dates here in 2017 of the 5th, the 10th, the 13th, whatever, of November, um, that we could, we could write that out in a way where it applies every year so that every year we're not having to have a discussion in July as to the date for 2019 is September 4th as yeah. opposed to September 17th or September 5th. Um, you just spell it out and it's the first Tuesday uh, after Labor Day mm -hmm. wow. of each year, um, and that way, the start of the next regularly scheduled well, right. first commissioner meeting in November. I, I, blah, blah, blah. I tried to if I, see? Do, I do, tried to do that yeah. by saying that it, the, they'd be announced in September, the first essentially the first business day, and applications would be due before the November meeting, um, things like that. I tried to put that in there so it can easily be tweaked if it was not clear, and I apologize if it wasn't. Well, and the other thing that I just think we should all take into account um, is, you know, where where an election day would fall into this calendar and, and how that would apply for all of us in terms of who gets to apply and who doesn't. Oh, yeah, that's Meaning, who 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 of the who of citizenry is is engaged uh, in local township sort of actions um, and. By this, we have the deadline, by my count, three days after the election. So, I mean, I, I just think that's something to consider if that's how we want to do it or not. That's all. Okay. Well, what I was trying to do here if was... If their candidate of choice doesn't get elected, they can always take their names out of consideration. But if they just get don't inspired <laughs> the day after election day to, to, to uh, suddenly start working for I, the candidate... I'm just saying that seems, like the, that, that seems like a, you know, a, a large sort of event that we should take into consideration when we're picking these yeah. dates. That's yeah, all. I yeah. don't, I mean, I don't just, I mean, is, is the first, is, is that first week in November early for the commitment? Well, it, let me, I, I, I got some feedback from Ms. Cugini from the administration office. And I, I had picked that date because, one, if you do it after elections, then if there is, as is in here, someone who is newly elected to this board, that person should be able to participate in the interviews, I believe, because they're going to be making those appointments and shouldn't be blind. But she points out that, you know, and I, I, try, I thought we'd schedule interviews starting in November, and she points out already that this year, for example, um, the first board meeting in November is the 13th. The 20th is our budget meeting. We have a work session December 4th, a regular meeting December 11th. The 23rd is Thanksgiving, 24th. Um, and then Veterans Day is off. So we've already got a lot of days that we're not going to be able to meet and interview. So I think a wider time frame. I mean, we've had it where, you know, uh, the, the oh, president here, I think it was last year, you had to schedule it on a certain date and you really didn't have time to get input from all of us. And I was out of town on business and that can happen. But if we have a longer time frame, I think we can come to more of a consensus. That's why um, that we're not cramping them in as often happens oh we've got to do this the last week of December when you know people have Christmas or whatever going on and I, I'd like to avoid the shoehorning of interviews into two days and give us as much time as possible especially if we're considering reapp reappointments because that will add to the pool sometimes potentially you know maybe not double it but will increase it significantly well and then here's something to consider uh, maybe we have two different, maybe maybe for anybody seeking reappointment to a position they have, they need to get it to us by, um, by the first Monday in November, um, and that we do interviews of incumbents um, quickly, because that shouldn't be affected by anything. Otherwise, we can make the third Monday in October for anybody new applying to a spot 
um, that takes into account an intervening election and we can take care of it we can take care of dealing with all incumbents maybe before thanksgiving or try to do it before december 1st in terms of interviews and then interview new people in the month of december because as a rule we've not interviewed any incumbents i think even in the situation where incumbents have gone to different boards correct i think we've just gone on their record or gone on their thing so i mean that's a, that's a thought i do think there's a legitimate point to extending out the the interest date let's call it to let's say the third monday in in november um but incumbents are incumbents they've already they've already served and they should know by november 1st whether they want to serve or not again and let us know before and we can uh we can schedule their interviews quickly i agree i agree with you larry it's a it's a great idea to get, do them first um i do have a question there are sometimes some commissioners can't make the interview process. Sure. So in that case, do we we still reserve the right to call the individual, or yeah. can we set up like let's say three of us want to meet? Yeah. We still have that hmm? ability to meet with that person yeah. if we want. Correct. I mean, I assume that's never been an issue, right? Everybody can do their own due diligence, can't they? I mean, for the most part, most people come through at least one commissioner, express their interest to a specific commissioner, and right. But I also it's a rare think stranger. that's why um, I think it's it, it's it needs to be required that we get their name, address, email, name, right. phone number, email address. Right. Because in the past, I've had names, and I don't know who Bill Smith is. Well, and I mean, I, it's, if, it's really not been that bad. We've we've there been a couple. We've made it a lot better. But I get what you're oh, saying. I, this, really, this really this yeah. really dots the I, crosses the T. I get it, and and that's fine. No, I mean, that's that's why I saw that, and that's why it's a good idea to have that <clears> because we could contact them. And if, if several of us want to meet with them, if because maybe a couple of us could meet, we could do that, or we could talk to them over the phone. Absolutely. Uh, do we want to go ahead and address uh, filling vacancies out of the ordinary process? I mean, basically adopt this same resolution with just, um, you know, instead of specific dates, first Monday in November, just a certain 30 days within the announcement of vacancy, 60 days within the announcement, and the board decides at the next meeting and have the same kind of thing. Because that's been kind of slap dash that, as well. That, you're right about that. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, that's a good idea, too. So if we, I mean, uh, if, if, if we adopt something, Dan, if we're on the schedule, uh, Commissioner Siegel, of, of consider um consider at the work session in august of some revisions which we've discussed as well as a second section relating to vacancies uh consider it and hopefully approve it at the august meeting that's plenty of time for folks to understand the new yeah. the new the new rules we're working under in the fall yeah. I don't have a especially since that. it's like nine that's weeks good. between announcing we have openings and expecting resumes back yeah um, we can put this in as a as a resolution for August, yeah. and discuss it at the work session, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then present it. Shall I try to revise it based on my sense of the discussion, and then obviously we can, you know, make further revisions because yeah. I think I have a sense of the board. I <coughs> may not be right, but I think I got an idea i think you should I mean, if yeah, you want to yeah if you want to divvy up yeah. break up incumbents versus <coughs> newbies yeah. and um if you want to add a provision of this that basically copies everything but sets a, a floating schedule for filling vacancies great yeah i have no you problem can get a sense of what's going on and then put something together for the yeah. for the work session then Absolutely. we'll yeah we'll fine. uh if, well, obviously there'll be changes but and then pass right. it at the regular meetings fine. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to move this then. Uh, it's going to go into resolution uh, form, and then we're going to discuss it at the August 7th work session for it to be presented on the agenda. Oh, is that where our 7th and the 14th? August 7th August and August then the 14th. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Next on the agenda, uh, Mr. Denny, from Recreation, we have Dogs and Parks update. Good job, uh, Commissioner. Thanks. Yeah, bravo. Uh, thank you, Commissioners. I had mentioned in my presentation at the June work session that there was some uh, ordinances in our code that I was bringing in front of the Park Board 
to discuss, and one of those was the issue of dogs. In June, we, because of conflicts, we only had four members of the park board were able to attend, and we decided to, it's probably best to get the full board. So we're going to bring it up again in July and have invited different uh, members of the uh, community to come and speak, some of them being the people from Preston Field and some other areas to talk about dogs. So uh, respectfully request, hold off until next month before we make any recommendations. Okay. Tim, uh, one thing that I did, I have had some phone calls on this, and uh, a big worry about having dogs in the park is <clears throat> when we have, when you have um, children who, who are allergic to dogs, um, and, and this law is in place, if, if that parent sees a dog around, he can say, you know, you got to get the dog out of the park, and the, and the law is what it is, and they've got to move out. If we change that, and, and the, uh, a child who who is allergic, uh, the, the parents got to move the child out of, you know, and, and in a lot of places that we're talking about the perimeter, you, that's where you're watching the games. That's where things are happening. So we need to make sure when we discuss this, uh, when we have this discussion, to make sure that we keep that in mind about children with allergies and, and the fact that they should have, they shouldn't have to move, that the dog should be the one to be, uh, in, in that situation, so. Well, I'll certainly bring that to the park board okay. as part of the discussion. And those bees. <laughs> Can you get the bees out of the park? <laughs> I'll be allergic to bees. Thank you, Mr. Denny. Next on the agenda, now we do have here uh, the backyard hens from the health department, but their research is not done just yet. Their report has not been submitted yet. She'll, she'll uh, have it for her. Uh, by uh, the August yep. work session. So, and that's where we'll go with that one. Uh, the climate control update actually was the EAC. That's what that one was. So next we will do uh, Citizens Forum. Citizens Forum is 20 minutes registered speakers and 20 minutes agenda. Uh, speakers are speaking about anything on the agenda. Um, and then there's three minutes for each person to speak. And uh, the first two people on this list here it is a, a pleasure uh, to always welcome back uh, Commissioner Jan Marie Rushforth, who would like to speak on climate control. such a pleasure to be here. And by the way, Tim, Hi. nice yeah. shirt, yeah. blazing new trails. <laughs> yes. That's good on you. Thank you. Thank you. Especially the extra large. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy paid for that himself. Oh, yeah. What's that? Yeah. Timmy paid for that himself. Oh, I'm sure he did. <laughs> and wove it. <laughs> good evening, commissioners and friends. Recently, my doctors told me I have weeks to months to live. So it's an interesting time, cancer-related. After my 12 years working at uh, Howard Reserve for green space and recreation, preserving 80%, yay, and uh, as EAC chair, I, I expanded my vision beyond that. This page would have been made more sense if we were asking for the full carbon fee and dividend with border adjustment. But in compromise, we went with an easier ask for you fine gentlemen. I've been volunteering with Citizens Climate Lobby, CCL, which approaches citizen lobbying, asking us to be respectful, appreciative, and kind. This approach taken by Citizens Climate Lobby and how this approach can work in all of our, all kinds of things, because who doesn't like you respected and appreciated? Name me one person. Um, in today's partisan world, CCL's approach is to acknowledge, appreciate, and respect bipartisan solutions, and I feel very hopeful and optimistic about this approach. CCL says we bet the farm on building relationships. I also like win-win plans, and that's what CCL is working toward. Their plan for a steady increasing, steadily increasing carbon tax and dividend has been studied and shown 
to be good for business, good for job creation, good for national security, good for saving lives, good for the environment. Why is this issue so important to me? To me, it's a moral issue. I'm not a member of an organized religion right now, but I want to contribute to a better world. And it seems to me that climate change is the most pressing issue of our time. The vast consensus of scientists around the globe are all telling us the climate, the global warming is real, man-made, and left unchecked will lead to catastrophic con consequences for humanity. I read that the last time CO2 levels were as high as they are now was before man even existed and sea level was 100 feet higher. That's where we are now. It's scary. So the method is respect and appreciation, something we can all use more of in the world today. And the goal is a well thought out plan that uses the market to get the whole economy involved in reducing CO2 while helping the economy, creating jobs, helping national security, and helping the environment. Did I say saving lives? I believe we're the first generation to see the effects of climate change and the last generation to be able to lead off the worst of it. Thank you, Dan. That's a hard act to follow. I just want to briefly introduce myself and then um, get into what I want to talk about tonight, which is the same topic that Jan talked about. My name is Noel Smith. I'm in the first ward. I've been in Hanford Township most of my life. I grew up here as a child. I went to Sacred Heart School. I went to Cardinal O'Hara. Um, I now have raised my family here. My, my children went to uh, the Hanford Township schools as well. So I feel this is, this is my home and, 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 um, and I feel comfortable speaking about a very important issue uh, to this um, Commissioner's Board. So first of all, thank the, uh, the commissioners for, for, uh, for what you've done in the past around supporting um, what I call energy efficiency and long-term thinking. What you've done with the, uh, the CREC um, specifically uh, really takes a long-term view of um, our energy usage and our environmental impacts uh, specifically. I know Commissioner D'Amelio is a big advocate for the geothermal system, again, which pays for itself and reduces our impact on the environment. Uh, there's also the new police station, the LED lights, and all of these things matter in, uh, in, in reducing our impacts. I want to thank Jan for really inspiring me. I'm, uh, I'm part of the CCO. I recently kicked off the uh, Delaware County chapter for the Citizens Climate Lobby, and it's really based on the inspiration of people like Jan, who has been working at this for uh, a long time and is very tireless and inspiring as to how she approaches it. So I hope to take the mantle from, from her and to really push this forward. And um, I really just thank Jen for her uh, inspiration to, to me personally. I want to voice my support for a resolution on climate. I, I watched, uh, I wasn't here last week, I was traveling on business, but I, um, I saw the, uh, the township meeting on YouTube and I, I saw the discussion around a climate resolution, a very simple statement that the township was considering around climate change and it stated simply that climate change is real, it's, it's caused by human, human activity and that our state assembly and our national congress should do something about it. So I want to voice my support for that. I want to talk about the uh, CCL. I know um, Jan talked about it. It's a bipartisan group. One of the first things that CCL did was to create a climate solutions caucus in congress that uh, to be a member of this caucus, there must be one Democrat and one Republican. They must go in pairs. Um, there's currently 48 members, uh, equal members from each party that are part of that Climate Solutions Caucus. And so, as Jan mentioned, we are looking at bipartisan solutions that work for everybody uh, in the country. Um, there is the climate uh, or the uh, carbon fee and dividend plan, which Jan briefly mentioned. Uh, we have a lot more detail on that, and I'd be glad to talk to anyone about that after the meeting if they'd like. But it's a, it's a plan that doesn't grow government. It does solve the problem of climate, and it lets the free market economy do that in a way that doesn't hurt your pocketbook. The importance of this resolution is, um, in, in your uh, statement, your resolution, it's, it's, it's very um, influential and impactful. We meet with Representative Meehan, our member of Congress, 
who uh, represents most of uh, Hereford Township and, and you know, we've got this District 7. He's very familiar with our um, carbon fee and dividend plan. In fact, he's one of the original members of that Climate Solutions Caucus. He's been on uh, an early uh, supporter for what we were, were talking about. Your, um, we, we talked to him twice a year. We visit him in Washington and, and during every uh, congressional recess, we do speak to him in his local office. So we're, we have a, an ongoing dialogue with him. And one of the things that he asked us to do is to, um, to help him help support this plan. And that's where we're here talking to you tonight. He wants to know he's influenced by your thoughts and by your support. And if you support that resolution, I will personally meet with uh, Representative Meehan in the August recess, and we will bring it to him that Hereford Township uh, made this resolution in, the in speaking for the people of Hereford Township. So thank you for considering that. And if anyone is interested in more information, I do have flyers to hand out at the end if someone wants to. So, for you. technical reasons, we do need uh, name and address. Oh, yeah. For yeah, Noel Smith, 1838 Rose Street Lane. Everton. Thank you. Yep. Hi, uh, my name is Alan Rushforth. I'm a professional engineer. I live at 3700 Darby Road in Havertown. And uh, I think I'm best known for being the wife, the husband <laughs> of Jamory Rushforth. Um, <clears throat> so I just I want to second everything that Jan and Noel said. Uh, and I just and be, I want to say something that's a little bit off topic first. I want to thank the, uh, everybody here on the board and also Larry Gentilly. I think maybe you get a lion's share of, of credit for this, like just how beautiful the township looks. I've lived around Hanford Township my whole life and all the beautification and the, recently the fountain and the little triangle down the end of 320 and Darby. It's all awesome. So great job. Yeah. Um, here, here. And then back on climate issues, um, I j this um, you know we could work in our township to you know go bend over backwards and 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 make try and get net zero and everything electric car and it's not going to solve the problem. We need this needs to be addressed at the national level and triggering international efforts, and so this is. You know, I just want to second and encourage that this resolution, it can be meaningful. It can, it shows our um, congressman that there is support at the local level. He needs to feel he is backed, backed up. So, again, I encourage uh, passing of the resolution to uh, address climate change at the national level and state level, too, for what they can do. But I think this is primarily a national thing. Um, and just a word more on the... Good ideas bear repeating this this carbon fee and dividend. It's 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 a well thought out approach. There's a steadily increasing fee on carbon based fuels, and it, what that does is, it it makes it so the entire economy, the whole market gets involved because things that get more expensive, you you look for alternatives. Okay, and then the fee that comes back this because this is a revenue neutral plan. So all the money collected goes back out to legal residents in equal dividends. And that actually um, um, benefits and, tr and triggers economic growth and job creation. And then it also saves lives. A study has been done on this by Regional Economic Modeling, Inc., a fairly conservative organization. Uh, helps the environment, helps national security. It's like a win-win-win on all kinds of fronts. So uh, your support would be meaningful. And uh, thank you for your time in considering that. Thank you very much, Rush Fourth team. <laughs> uh, next on the um, on the list here is Gene Lutz for Climate Control. which was signed by people. 
by 450 people. Please protect the earth. Thank you. <laughs> I'm Jean Lutz. I also live at 169 Clemson Road. Um, I am Evelyn's mom. And Evelyn is the youngest member of my family, so I thought it would be appropriate for her to deliver this petition to the commissioners. I have copies of it for everyone, which just reiterates a lot of things that everyone has already been talking about here today. So, I think that since our children will face the most consequential and scariest effects of climate change, my passion for the issue comes from my status as a mom. So, thank you. Okay, so those are the people who signed up, and at this time we're going to take um, those who would wish to speak about anything on agenda items. So I'll start with, with I'm going to start with this side of the room, anybody on the first row? Second row, the third row, on this side of the room, the first row, the second row, Miss Angel. I'm Jean Angel, 2510 B Road in Havertown. I'm speaking on behalf of HPD, the Haverford Partnership for Economic Development. We want to thank Larry Gentilly for submitting an application for a multimodal grant for Darby Road in Oakmont. And we'd like to encourage the board to support this project. HPD identified this section between Brick and Brew and the paint store as an important next step in beautifying our business districts. And Mr. Gentilly was quick to agree that this area needs work but also has a great deal of potential. With your support, HPD has added planters and a bench to that district and we'll be adding a sign and planters to the parking lot later this year. If the township does receive this grant, the addition of antique style streetlights, new sidewalks, and other green elements will make a huge difference. Thank you to the board for working together to beautify our town and supporting our local business community. While I'm up here, can I just say something yes. about tomorrow's? Just segue mm -hmm. into it. Okay. Speaking of beautification. <laughs> so HBD has an event tomorrow night, and I just want to make all of you aware of it. It's this moonlight dining on the boulevard. It's on Brookline Boulevard. It's like media's Dining Under the Stars event. We expect one to 2,000 people to come. So we hope all the commissioners come. Um, it's already, we've already gotten hundreds and hundreds of reservations for several of the businesses. So Vida and Kettle are completely filled for reservations. But Miguel Cuddy's Sampan Inn, um, they, they still have reservations. And Centrella's Deli is doing a huge buffet. There's Jano's Pizza and Vida Food Truck. So. Feel free to come if you haven't made any reservations. We'd love to see you there. We'll be taking small donations that are going to be for the purchase of um, string lights along Brookline Boulevard. So they'll be you know, across the street lights, and they're like Edison-style lights. And so we're hoping to purchase those sometime this year. Hope to see you there. Uh, I'd like to add, Gene, <clears throat> that Kaufmeyers and Testas will be serving dessert also. And we have several stores that are open. I don't know if you guys know, two new stores have just opened. I'm the flanking kettle. So on one side where the was hockey shed, was that, the hockey, yeah, shed, hockey uh, shed is now local home and goods. And it's a great, great little store. Um, they have their first store in media and this is like their second location. Kathleen Road is there and she's terrific. So I'd stop in there that night or later if you can't come. And then around the corner, a local young lady is um, has opened a place called Vicious Vesture, and her, she's a fashion designer. She's gone to art school, and she has a neat place, and she does what she calls gypsy punk clothing. It's very, very different. It's fun. She's a really nice girl, so hope you patronize those places. Yeah. Tomorrow night, Morning. 5 and to 11 p.m. <coughs> Yeah, and those business, other businesses will be open during that, so you can walk through and St. Jude shop and the other businesses there that'll be open. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much.
Continuation of that row? Third row? The last row? Yes, please come forward. Hi, I'm Steve Fisher, 827 Cricket Avenue. First of all, commissioners, thank you so very much for your service to our township. Uh, I just want to mention quickly that I'm very, very proud as a citizen of this township uh, about what I heard here tonight. It's fantastic. The EAC and your support of it is absolutely fantastic. The qualifications that the committee has uh, brought to the township is incredible, and your support for it is fantastic. Uh, I thank you very much for that. Your support for the environment in our township is evident. The CREC is a shining example. And I just, but I stood up only because I want to answer Ryan's question a slightly different way. He asked, will the new building be powered by solar? And the answer was, we might have some solar panels for the parking lot, and that was a really fantastic answer. But there's another possible answer that Peter alluded to, which is you can consider signing up for a solar plan. It might cost a little bit more, but you'll be able to answer the question, yes, our buildings are powered by solar. The premium might not be significant. I made that choice for my household. 10% more? Something like that. Please consider it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else in the last row? No, thank you, every, everyone, for coming forward. Um, let me start off then with um, Commissioner uh, Rushforth. Thank you very, very much for coming this evening and speaking. Um, you always give a lot of electricity in the air here <laughs> every time you, you show up. Um, as you know, that this board is very much committed to um, climate control, and, and, and actually even with, with the beautifications in, in Hereford Township, all of that goes into it. Stormwater runoff, uh, it, that we have the issues throughout the township that we're addressing that as well. A lot of that goes into grants that we apply for because we don't want all the burden to fall back onto the taxpayer. So grants are very important. Uh, it's just a matter of we wish we had grant writers, but they, they cost more than the grants. Um, did you have something to say? Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to speak uh, to Jan Marie in, in general. Um, um, not the most articulate person, but um, I do want to say it has been. I mean, I was able to, to go to your house the other day and, and spend some time with you, which was which was uh, meant a lot to me. Um, you've always been, as as you said tonight, you've always been respectful appreciative and kind and that's something that I really respect and and when I got to work with you on single stream recycling and some of the other things when you were commissioner um, I really appreciated that I really appreciated how how you're not you know you're not about politics you're about getting stuff done and I really I really enjoyed it so thank you thank you so much I really do appreciate it <laughs> I would also like to add uh, to Alan's comment about uh, the beautification going on in the township. That beautification, um, a lot of it's being done by the um, Hartford Partnership for Economic Development. Um, that's the township working together with, with the HPD and, um, and putting these planters in, the flowers, the, the gardens, all those sort of things. Uh, the township takes on some of the responsibility for this and, and, um, and the HPD works together and uh, it's putting this at HPD, really you can see the difference in the township uh, since the HPD and the township have started working together to, to beautify the township. It really has made a big difference throughout the township. And, and as I sit, I'm very proud because I sit on the board of, of the HPD. So it really, when, when Alan said that, it really did mean, uh, you know, it means a lot because um, obviously we, we put a lot 
Gene and, and the rest of the board and, and myself, we put a lot of work into this and not just the, the money and, and design, but we're actually putting the plants in there and designing, Gene designs all the, you know, <clears throat> puts all the plants in where they go and, and does all the logistics. So um, big thanks to the HPD on that. And trees. Oh, and the tree, the tree tenders. Um, also, Gene is the, uh, Gene, I, and, and Mary Courtney uh, put together tree tenders. And um, over the last 10 years, over the last eight years, we planted about 750 trees. And so we have a goal of about 1,000 trees, uh, which we, we are going to make that goal um, in, in 10 years. So, you know, this is part of uh, the climate action plan that started a long time ago. So I really want to thank Gene because she really does take ownership of this of the uh, tree tenders project and then I just show up and plant trees and, and she tells me where to go and what to do and who to call and yeah I know uh, but he never yeah. includes me he never oh, just you <laughs> know that's true Chris is always there too he's got a higher canopy <laughs> Chris is always there with us too the, thank you um, <laughs> this, this evening um, Jan Marie and Noel and, and Alan and, and Jean and all and your daughter. Thank you for your lovely daughter coming up. And we do have under new business, um, Commissioner Lewis is going to bring up um, a resolution regarding uh, climate control. Mr. Chairman, yeah. may I just make a suggestion that we move it up to number eight? We absolutely can. We can add it to the uh, agenda. But I will also open up the table if any other commissioner would like to speak in regards to this. Which, Mr. President, I would love to if I may, but uh, Jimmy, were you? Okay, we can, we can move it up. Oh, I, I, we're just not finished with public comment, right? Is that, are we still? I, I wanted to address Commissioner Rushforth as well, if I may. Well, and, and that's what I thought, because I know uh, there are some of you gentlemen that had an opportunity to work with her. So I would like to open that up to anybody who mm -hmm. has worked with the commissioner to express themselves. Um, Mr. President, thank you. Um, tonight is, is turning out to be a very nostalgic night for me. I, I mentioned earlier, 19 years knowing the Kasulis. It was 12 years ago that I met the Reshforths, and it was in their kitchen um, where Jan Marie and a number of us first got together and got the notion of, of running for commissioner. Um, and, and one of the things that struck me during uh, during that time, that, that, that great time in 2005, um, were the words of Abraham Lincoln, who, who said in his second inaugural address, um, reminded everybody that we, um, that we should strive to finish the work with malice toward none and with charity for all. And that, and, and that is how Commissioner Rushforth conducted herself at all times. In 05, she uh, went through a very difficult uh, election and um, uh, with an outcome uh, that, that she nor many of us wanted, and she handled that with extraordinary grace. Um, and then was appointed to this board um, and handled that with extraordinary grace um, and performed her, um, her duties here um, with, uh, with professionalism and, and, and always, um, always with, a, with a very personal dedication to the environment. And, and her words to us tonight, and which were shared with all of us, and all of us read very starkly what, what Mrs. Rushforth said at the beginning about what her doctor told her and what she's dealing with, and she mentioned religion. And I would say this, I think the only, I think the only test at the end of our lives, uh, Jan Marie, is whether the world is a better place for, for any of us having been in it. Um, and whatever religion anybody is in or no religion, I think at the end of, um, I think at the end of your days, um, People are going to realize that Haverford and the world is a better place because of because of their interaction with you and because of because of your having been here with us. So I just want to say thank you so much for the privilege um, to have known you for these 12 years and to have been inspired uh, by you um, to do what I could in this township. So thank you. Well, Jan Marie, you know I'm going to say something because I've been here the longest and you've been coming in here for a lot of years and a lot of times, sometimes we didn't always agree on things, but I'll tell you one thing. You're, you're a fighter. You're a fighter at the very end. You've always done a good job. When you were on the Board of Commissioners with us here, you did a great job. And 
you're a true lady. That's all I can say. And God bless you. Franny and I were just talking last night. We just found out about you had had a party the other night at the house. And Franny was upset that we didn't know about it because we would have came. I know there's some people there that might not have liked Jimmy, but, you know, that's, <laughs> that's okay, too. But, uh, but no, we were saying, uh, and Fran thinks the world of you. And whatever happens, God bless you. You're a true lady and a true human being. Thank you so much for all your service. And thank you for being Jan Marie Rushforth. Here, here. I'll just echo, Jen, it was a pleasure to work with you. We started on the uh, Citizens Advisory Council years ago together, and, uh, and then we've come a long way. And I, I just echo everything it says. You, you're just a lady and just a perfect worker. I, I've never seen anybody work as hard as you for this township, and that includes all nine of us that are currently up here combined. Uh, your energy has just been, you're a dynamo that just never stopped. So always in green, too. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So thank you. You, you said something the other day. Uh, <clears throat> you said it's not your favorite color, but you always wore it. So it doesn't always look good on me. Yeah, yeah. So she said it doesn't always look good on her, but she wore it just for the environment, just to 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 bring out the fact that the environment needed attention. So thank you, Commissioner Siegel. Yeah, um, I remember when we first met. It was in my living room, and you were going to run for commissioner. And I think after you left, you thought I was sort of a jerk, and I thought <laughs> you didn't belong in politics. Um, and I think we were probably both right. Um, because it was clear to me that you were passionate, and that your passion was the environment, was the, rec the, the reserve, it was all of those things. And it wasn't sort of some of the politics that we deal with on this board. And you, you know, you lost, unfortunately, but you, you served admirably um, in the interim before I was elected. Um, and you and I went past all of our first impressions and have become good friends. And you are someone I respect tremendously. Um, and your commitment and your passion has stood out throughout. And you, you found your place that has made this township and will always make it a better place. Um, and, you know, our relationship grew um, from those impressions. But what you did and how you have been involved in so many things, always, you know, with a smile, always in a way that, you know, makes me proud that you're a resident uh, that I re get to represent. So, you know, we got past our initial impressions and you, you're, you found your niche and you've been just wonderful for this township and to me. Thank you. Uh, anybody, Commissioner? Yes. Um, I was very sad to, to hear about what's going on with you, knowing that my own family is struggling with the same thing. And it's very difficult. Uh, but. I do want to thank you. You should know you made an impact on this township. You did. And you were the type of commissioner that, you know, there, there was no animosity. It was just we could discuss any subject. And, again, whether we disagreed with each other, it was just mutual respect. But the one thing I'm going to miss is when you used to come up and hand us something, a treat or some kind of knick-knack yeah. and one Andy. day we got candy <laughs> well we received coal once i think didn't we i think he did <laughs> <laughs> it was around christmas and i think he gave us coal <laughs> but i always look forward to something we had chocolate we had something to do with whatever topic you were bringing up so I the chocolate better. well I, yeah <laughs> unfortunately it's not good for me but um we did, but thank you for everything. And again, know that you made an impact. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, with that, um, I would like to wrap up then if the board would just please indulge me and anybody else would like to join us for another curtain call. Thank you very much.
follow that up with next on the agenda. <laughs> uh, Mr. President. So we do have some business. Um, Commissioner D'Amelio put a request in. Uh, Mrs. Widop has joined us. And Mr. Holmes, um, you have I, a question. I would, uh, I would move that we... Um, uh, that we move the portion of new business that Mr. Lewis plans to discuss this um, resolution and uh, move it to the seventh uh, item on the agenda? That would be the eighth. eighth. The eighth item. The I'll second eighth. that. I'm sorry, the eighth item, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I can, uh, Mr. Schlister, I can just ask for uh, all those in favor? Yes. Yes, and all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? And the ayes have it. And so, therefore, we will move to <coughs> the item number eight uh, for the resolution for climate control. Mr. Lewis. Yes, uh, in recognition of the importance uh, of preserving our environment and the many contributions of Jan Marie, I'm pleased to introduce this resolution, resolution number 2063 2017, calling on the United States Congress to address climate change. Whereas the climate crisis is real, whereas people caused it, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Hereford Township calls on the United States Congress to take action now. Resolved this 10th day of July, 2017, signed by Chris Connell, the President, Township Board of Commissioners, and all other eight, com eight commissioners. Second. Seconded by Commissioner Oliva. Mr. President. Mr. Holmes. Mr. President, could I ask Mr. Lewis to consider an amendment to the resolution to add after the United States Congress to add the Pennsylvania General Assembly as well? I would accept that. Uh, Mr. Oliva? Mr. Yes, Oliva. I would accept that also. Okay. And we noted that it, that is added to the report for the Pennsylvania General Assembly. Why don't we add that President Trump has to sign it? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Why don't we add no. that? To the extent that we're calling for executive action, no reason not to call on President Trump and the would, governor of Pennsylvania. I would ask, mm -hmm. Mr. Lewis, that you include President Donald J. Trump. Happy to do that. And, and governor, the governor, 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 and the governor. Governor Wolf. And I accept that. Okay. Have all the changes, Let's Larry. One, leave us one <laughs> moment here, please. I think we can leave the other 49 states and the territories out of it and leave it up to them, right? They should Dixon line? Yeah. Okay. Gentlemen, we have a resolution before us. The process has been, uh, has been dealt with, and I will ask Mr. Secretary to please take the roll. Uh, Mr. D'Amelio? Absolutely, yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. And Mr. Connell? Yes, the resolution passes unanimously. And we will ask Public Works to put in a lot of bicycle racks out here. Because <laughs> we don't need the parking space, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you very much, everybody, for your patience and your understanding. And thank you to the board for um, all that you've done. Moving forward, number nine on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Approval of warrants. Mr. Chairman? Oh, uh, minutes. You got eight? Mr. Chairman? Oh, we moved we that moved eight. Okay, yes, eight. that'll yeah, be nine. Correct. I'd like okay, to make a, a, a motion to approve the regular meeting minutes of June the 12th, 2017. Second. Second. Seconded by Mr. Oliva. There being no discussion, please take the roll. Yeah. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. McGarity? Yeah, I, I don't have uh, page 12 on that, so I'll abstain, Chris. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. And Mr. Connell? Yes. At this time, we will take a two-minute recess. Great. <laughs> now that we will reconvene, 
And we will pick up then on item number 10, approval of warrants. Mr. Uh, President. Mr. Holmes. Mr. President, I move we approve warrant number seven of 2017, totaling four million four hundred thirty-one thousand six hundred thirty-five dollars and thirty-eight cents, comprising the general fund, uh, general and sewer fund payroll for June 15 of 2017, in the amount of six hundred sixty-two thousand one hundred five dollars and ninety-one cents. The general and sewer fund payroll for June 29 of 2017, in the amount of six hundred eleven thousand five hundred ninety-four dollars and two cents. General Fund Disbursements, number seven of 2017, in the amount of $1,504,475.91. The Sewer Fund Disbursements, number seven of 2017, in the amount of $40,810.22. Community Development Block Grant Fund Disbursement, number seven of 2017, in the amount of $89,777.48. Capital Fund Capital Projects Fund Disbursement Number Seven of 2017, in the amount of one million five hundred thirteen thousand two hundred ninety-nine dollars and fifty-nine cents, and the credit card statement ending June 29, 2017, in the amount of nine thousand five hundred seventy-two dollars and twenty-five cents. Second. Second. By Mr. Siegel. Mr. President, our our township uh, auditor has. Um, uh, has gone through these warrants. Any questions those warrants raised, uh, he has raised to our township personnel and his questions have been answered to his satisfaction. He has recommended to us that these warrants be approved and I agree with him and I recommend to all of you that we approve them. Any further discussion? There being none, please take the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. And Mr. Oliva? Yes. And Mr. Connell? Yes. Item number 11, formerly number 10, <coughs> ordinance number P9-2017. It's a second reading. Mr. President. Mr. Holmes. Mr. President, I move we adopt the second reading of ordinance number P9 of 2017, amending ordinance number 2735 of 2014, enacted on November 10, 2014, to revise the capital projects to be financed with the proceeds of the Township's General Obligation Bond Series of 2014. Second. And who was that, I'm sorry? Second. Second by Mr. Wexler. Discussion? Uh, as you recall, we, uh, we passed this last month. Um, these are changes made, changes allowed, um, and made to our um, previous uh, bond ordinance from 2014, uh, which enables us to um, uh, to reallocate uh, financed uh, funds um, for other capital projects that qualify for uh, the use of the funds, and those projects are described in the uh, Ordinance P9 of 2017, the construction of the Municipal Services Building of $6.2 million with a useful life of 40 years, storm sewer construction improvements of $1,720,000 with a useful life of 50 years, and the acquisition of three pieces of fire apparatus uh, for approximately $2 million with a 20-year useful life. Okay. Anything further? There being none, please take the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. And Mr. Connell? Yes. Item number 12 is Ordinance P10-2017, a traffic second reading. President, a motion to adopt the second reading of Ordinance P10-2017, authorizing traffic restrictions on the following highways. Rescind 175-91, Schedule 16, parking of all vehicles prohibited at all times on Hearst Terrace, east side, between the driveways leading to 34 East Eagle Road, approximately 118 feet north of East Eagle Road, and add Section 175-94, Schedule 19, parking time limited on Hearst Terrace, east side, anytime, two hours, 140 feet north of East Eagle Road. Removal of special purposes parking zones in front of 178 Juniper Road and on Foster Avenue on the side of 178 Juniper Road. Establish 15 minute parking only in front of 1014 Darby Road. Second. Second. Okay, actually, Commissioner D'Amelio seconded it. 
Any questions? This is the second reading. There being none, please take the roll. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarry? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. And Mr. Collins? Yes. Item number 13 is the first reading on ordinance number P11-2017. And that is going to be, is, that President. has to be with special parking and yeah, I'll take or leave it. it. Um, motion to adopt the following reading of ordinance number P11-2017, authori authorizing traffic restrictions on the following highways. Establish special parking, purpose parking in front of 733 Hathaway Lane, Ardmore, Pennsylvania, and in front of 2634 Chestnut Avenue, Ardmore, PA, rescind section 174. 593 schedule 18 parking prohibited during certain hours on Lanark Avenue 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. between signs at Mercer Avenue in front of 33 Fulmer Avenue amendment to uh, section 17591 schedule 16 parking of vehicles prohibited at all times on Lanark Avenue which currently restricts parking on the west side from Fulmer Avenue to Mercer Avenue if the ordinance is approved, it would be amended to restrict parking on the west side from Rodman Avenue to West Mercer Avenue. Second. Seconded by Mr. McGarity. Discussion? <clears throat> there be none, please take the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. McClellan? <coughs> yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. And Mr. Kyle? Yes, item number 14 is a resolution 2057-2017 for Howard Township. To adopt resolution number 2057-2017 that the Board of Commissioners designate Haverford Police Department's Chief John Viola to execute any and all documents with PennDOT and be responsible for the safety and welfare of res residents utilizing state highways on Haverford Township Day, Saturday, October 7, 2017. Second. Seconded by Mr. Oliva. Any discussion? There be none, please take the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. <clears throat> Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. Connell? Yes. Item number 15 is Community Development Program 2059-2017. Uh, Motion, motion to adopt resolution 2060-2017 that Hereford Township has taken positive steps to comply with the spirit and letter of the law through its operation and support of various fair housing programs and that all employees and officers are directed to continue to promulgate <coughs> fair housing objectives and continue to assist all persons who may fall within the scope of the Fair Housing Act. Second. Second by Mr. D'Amelio. Discussion? There be none, please take the roll. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. Mr. Kyle? Yes, item number 16 is a resolution 2016-2017 for community. One. Okay. No. Nope. Do 15. I think, we, I think we got mixed up on our numbers on resolution. We, we have not done the one previously 14, that 14. was the previous 14. Yeah, that one, you skipped over it. Right. Yeah, so make, 14 has Mr. To President, I make a motion to adopt resolution number 2059, 2017, that the allocations of the funds for the 43rd year community development program and for the 2016-2017 action plan are hereby approved and that no changes are made to the citizen participation plan and that the proper officers are hereby authorized to take such steps as may be necessary to implement the intent of this resolution. Second. Seconded by Mr. Oliva. Mr. President. Mr. Holmes. Uh, Mr. Rexler, would you just uh, amend your um, resolution to indicate that it's the 2017-2018 action plan you indicated 2016-2017? It's correct in the resolution. It's what the record I'll reflected. I'll accept it. Okay. So the next one. I did. We just did this one. We didn't. I accept it. Okay. okay. So we're back to this one. Yep. Okay, so there are, our next one is going to be, or I'm sorry. You still have to vote. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Let's uh, take the roll, please. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. And Mr. Oliva? Yes. And Mr. Connell? Yes. 
This item number 17 is the multimodal transportation fund grant request. Yes. Mr. President. Mr. Oliva. I'd like to make a motion to adopt resolution number 2061 2017 authorizing application to DCED for a multimodal, I'm sorry, multimodal transportation fund grant for improvements on the west side of Darby Road from Benedict from West Benedict to Bellamede Avenue. The total cost for this project would be approximately $585,000. The township would be responsible for approximately 175,000, which is a 30% match. Second. This is, this is what the HPD was discussing when Gene came up and spoke. Uh, this is the grant for, um, from uh, the brick and brew down to Yo Creations. So it would be street lights, um, new sidewalk, um, the, the planters that are there, there'll be, um, Improvements to the walkway. Um, anything else? It, it will go from that. the brick and brew to Benedict Avenue, and if and if the funds allow, we will go. From okay. So the first, the first to West Benedict. Yes. Part of it goes That's to West Benedict. Yeah. And okay, and then to down to your creations after that. Okay. To build me. It'll include that parking lot that's behind the this the stores. Correct. That does include. Not doing That's the parking, parking lot? lot would be the entrance to the parking lot. The entrance. Yeah. The entrance, yeah. yeah. Yes. With a sign. Mm -hmm. Anything further? There being none, please take the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. McCluskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarity? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. And Mr. Connell? Yes, item number 18 is resolution 2062-2017. That's the Arley Grant authorization. All right, uh, motion to award the <coughs> abatement of abs No. No, wait a minute, here? Okay, I'm sorry. Motion number to adopt 18. resolution 2062, 2017, authorizing the township manager to sign automated red light enforcement program project funding agreement on its behalf. Second. Second by Mr. D'Amelio. Comment, discussion? Where is this light? Is this, where is this going to be important? We're not telling. Mr. Pannoni? It's from the enforcement. You'll monies. find out. Yeah. The, um, the Arley grants are monies from the enforcement. Right. So the board might not remember. We've probably done about five years Arley grants. The, the most visible one was the triangle, where we did the traffic adaptive at the triangle that's been operating for maybe nine months. This is to put in a grant application, yeah, about $45,000 for the blind pedestrian stuff we were talking about at um, yep. gotcha. Manoa and at Eagle. Uh, no, my sister park. Eagle and my sister park, I'm Eagle. sorry. And then the other one is we have flashing uh, beacons they're gonna, that we're going to put in as part of the work we're doing along Darby Road at the middle school. The pedestrian crossing at the middle school, mm -hmm. they're, they're actually called beacons now. They call them flat, rapid flashing beacons. So that's about a $70,000. So that's a, there's two grant applications that are in. This resolution supports them both. Thank you, Dave, and your work on that. And thank you to the board. Anything further? Mayor being on, please take the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarry? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. And Mr. Connell? Yes. Item number 19 is the contract awards. Police motion, station. Motion to award the abatement of as, <laughs> asbestos containing hazardous waste materials to Plymouth Environmental Company, Norristown, PA, in the amount of $44,800, submitting the lowest responsible bid. Second. Seconded by Mr. Wexler. Any comments, discussion? This is uh, recommended to us by our township engineer. They analyzed the project and the bids and have recommended we do it. There be nothing further, please take the roll. Mr. D'Amelio? Yes. Mr. McCloskey? Yes. Mr. Siegel? Yes. Mr. Lewis? Yes. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. McGarry? Yes. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Oliva? Yes. And Mr. Kyle? Yes, item number 19 is the continuation of Citizens Forum for non-agenda items. Is there anybody on this side of the room who would like to come up and speak? Citizens Forum. First row, second row, third row, back row. And that will conclude Citizens Forum.
Item number 21 is new business, uh, which we took care of the, that one. And Mr. Lewis, yes. I believe you have one for the acquisition of new playground equipment. I apologize to my colleagues for not having this on the agenda, <clears throat> uh, but um, Tim Denny had spoken to this uh, when he made his presentation last month uh, about some equipment that we'd like to, to buy for much needed equipment for the polo field. Um, three, three pieces that um, the equipment up there is, I don't know, how old is that? <laughs> Sorry. How old is that equipment? It <laughs> uh, goes anywhere from 20 to 40 years. Yeah. Then. Anyway, it's, some of it's really a hazard, so some of it's being taken out. We'd like to replace uh, three pieces. Total cost is 36638 We work closely with the residents up there uh, in figuring out what their needs were, and so I'd like to ask the board for their uh, uh, approval of this uh, expenditure. Okay, and the cost about uh, that is again? The cost is $36,638.75. Thank you. They put that in the form of a motion. Second. Okay, then we need a second on it. But, um, but don't we first have to bring well, this? Probably I, I have think a, we have probably to bring have a, this to a motion to, to add it to the bring agenda. Bring it to yeah. the agenda. Then I move okay. that we add this to the agenda. Right, which you did say you wanted you wanted to yeah. do. Yes. Second. And Mr. McGarity, you seconded that to bring it. Yes. Of the right. agenda, yeah. Okay, on the agenda. Okay. Yeah, then you have to all in favor for it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the ayes have it. So we will place that on the agenda under new business. I think we now invite public comment on the issue. And uh, Mr. Denny, we, you wish to come up and... We, we probably should invite the public comment on that issue as well. Okay, all right. about playground equipment at the <laughs> but it's the equipment and I apologize this is uh, my mistake in, in not uh, having it on the agenda Andy had asked me about it and uh, we tried to get it on last month and I was late and I just forgot about it so I apologize for that but it's just uh, just replacement equipment up at the polo field uh, it's part of the plan for capital that we had already uh, been talking with Larry for the last six to eight months about. Uh, Irwood, and uh, this is equipment at Polo that we've been working with the neighbors on that they've picked out. It's under the CoStars grant, so it does not need to go out to, to bid per se. Uh, just, move, just doing this tonight enable you to get it in in time for additional programs or the fall or anything like that? That was our hope, is to get it ordered and then Jason's guys can get it in in the fall. That's our goal. Where it money? comes from, it'll, the monies will come through the budget of recreation? This is this monies will come under the capital bond 2012. It's the remaining funds that are in that bond. Is it from the remaining funds or it's the remaining funds? The remaining funds, yeah. There were certain projects that we had targeted until new money's approved. Skate park, polo, uh, or wood. Does the board have any questions? No. Thank you, Mr. Denny. Thank you. At this time, I would like to ask anybody if they would like to come up and um, as part of the Citizens Forum, if they would like to come up and comment about this new item on the agenda. This side of the room. First row, second row, third row, last row. There being none, and if there are no further questions, it is on the agenda, and the motion is to purchase three pieces of equipment for the polo field at $36,638.75. Correct. I think it, somebody needs to make the motion again. Okay. <laughs> Okay, do you want to make the motion? Yeah, I would move that we buy three pieces of play, playground equipment, total cost of $36,638.75. Second. Second. All right, I'll give that one to Mr. McGarity. <laughs> Since we don't have a document in front of us, could we just be really specific on the record? Moving to purchase three pieces of equipment that have been identified by the Parks and Recs Department Yes, and, yeah. uh, and approve and approve and not approve, right. but but already citizen, specifically citizen exists. Input. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Present input. 
you'd like, I could get the name of the company. The sure, why not? Denny Construction, Inc. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to fill the silence, Tim. It's harder than that. It's just a relative. Yeah. <laughs> His wife's maiden name is what he's using. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're joking for anybody who's watching actually on TV right no, now. No, we're not. Yeah. Yes, we are. No, we're not. Yes, we are. <sighs> yeah, the name of the company is Recreation Resources. Are they a company you're familiar with and you trust, Mr. Denny? Page number in the catalog? A lot of uh, work here in the township <laughs> over the years, yes. <laughs> Page number in the catalog? <laughs> Where are they out of? Ten that was it written, please? <laughs> <laughs> See, it would have been a lot easier if it was on the agenda, right? <laughs> yeah, it sure would. <laughs> we'll just enter Mr. Denny's <laughs> smartphone into the record. <laughs> Make it subject to yeah. Freedom of Information Act requests. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Tim. If there is nothing further, Mr. Secretary, please take the roll. Mr. D'Amelio. Yes. Mr. McCloskey. Yes. Mr. Siegel. Yes. Mr. Lewis. Yes. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Mr. McGarrity. Yes. Mr. Wexler. Yes. Mr. Oliva. Yes. Mr. Connell. Yes. Anything else for new business? There being none, we will go into number 22, other business, and we will start with Commissioner D'Amelio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just want to make an announcement. My first ward meeting at the Manoa Firehouse will be on September 20th. That's a Wednesday at 7 p.m. I believe that the Hereford Drug Alliance uh, organization will be there, and um, I'm hoping to get... Um, uh, what's the uh, DA's name? Jack Whalen, as well, to come and speak on uh, the heroin issue that's uh, plaguing this nation, indeed the county and this township. So I think it's critical that uh, we maintain information for anyone who needs help. Um, the 34th national annual National Night Out is Tuesday, August 1st from 1,800 to 2,100 hours. I'm sorry? From 6 p.m. <laughs> you sound like a police officer. 1,800 is one. So I had to use the police, the police thing, terminal. You know? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> anyway, it's at the Quarry Center, and it's uh, there's be few food, <laughs> and the feuds, hopefully, food, music, police, and fire displays. And it's a good night to come out and meet the police officers, emergency responders, and even your neighbors. It's a wonderful event. I've, I've attended, so uh, some of you have. on that, Steve? I'm sorry? What's the date? The date is uh, Tuesday, August 1st. It begins at 6 p.m. 6 to 9, huh? Well, hey, way to go. Jimmy knows. And uh, just God bless Jan Marie Rushforth. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. McCluskey? Um, just first, I'd like to thank uh, all the civic associations. Uh, I know many of my colleagues will probably echo similar sentiments regarding July 4th festivities that occurred at, at many of our parks uh, across the township. Um, we're supported by many of our local volunteer fire companies. Um, and just uh, an example of, of volunteer work uh, to put on a, a events that, that really uh, help shine uh, a terrific light on this township and uh, are part of why uh, people like living here and, and like raising families here. So uh, thank you to everyone who was involved um, across the township, but also in the third ward at Merwood Park at the Oakmont Fire Company, um, and I know at Paddock Park as well. Um, and just to touch on, uh, you know, tonight was a really great meeting, and I think the the resolution we passed regarding climate change uh, was vitally important. And it, 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 you know, a couple of the speakers spoke to how how the the voice of us speaking as a board is one uh, it does have an impact on. Um, you know, members of, of the Pennsylvania State Assembly and, and hopefully of Congress as well. Um, but it does send a message that this township takes uh, the issue of climate change seriously. But I, I think also 
in passing that resolution, it's incumbent on us to uh, take the recommendations of the EAC and, and work with them now over the next couple months to uh, not only just pass the resolution, but also sort of practice what we're preaching um, and make sure that uh, we're doing everything possible uh, to sort of serve as a, as a positive representative uh, in this in this. Uh, in, in sort of this battle that we're all facing uh, with climate change. Um, and I think sort of looking back at the 2008 and, and now uh, and collecting the data that the EAC talked about is is really important, especially considering that we're going to be moving into a new building next year. And, and collecting that data will give us uh, you know, facts and will give us factual information as to what we are doing and what we, we aren't doing. Um, and hopefully that, we, you know, we can have conversations like Commissioner D'Amelio described with, um, what was his name? With Noel, um, you know, and we can sort of bridge gaps of, uh, and, and speak on, on factual information to, to move this township forward. So, um, you know, I think tonight was a positive first step, um, and I look forward to continuing it. That's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Siegel. Thank you. Uh, sort of following or almost echoing uh, what um, Commissioner McCluskey said first. Um, I just want to remind people that on Wednesday is the uh, second of the five concerts in the Haverford um, uh, Concert in the Park Summer Series. This one is at Paddock Farms um, in the, uh, the Paddock uh, Park, and it'll be on Wednesday at 6 p.m. featuring the uh, Panisi family uh, band, and it's open not only to Fourth Ward residents, obviously, but all township residents, um, and it's uh, sponsored by or produced by Kelly Music for Life, who uh, sponsored and produced the Irish Festival that was so successful um, and was really uh, fun to attend when I attended with Mr. D'Amelio and Oliva and some others. Um, but July 4th uh, is interesting because what Commissioner McCluskey said, I had some people say to me, well, doesn't Haverford have its own parade like Marple and some of the other communities? And I realized no, because we are a community of communities. And this year really sort of highlighted that in the fourth ward, uh, before July 4th, Maryland Park, um, which has not had sort of an active civic group for many years, had a, um, a block party with 170 people attending, more children than I can ever remember seeing in the neighborhood, um, with one or two uh, residents in particular, uh, and a particular shout out to Linda Tino, who really is the <coughs> vital cog behind it all, and has really revitalized a neighborhood in a sense of community um, as you know, more people move in, everyone feels welcome. And then on July 4th, uh, Linwood Park Civic Association, which is in both the first and the fourth wards, had their uh, parade and it has new leadership in their uh, civic association, Janine Quastak, and it was a remarkably well-attended event, uh, more publicized, more organized than anything I'd seen, and again, more kids and more families than ever, and Paddock Farms had theirs on July 1st. They've been moving it to the weekend before, and that was also enormously successful, and it involved the fire companies. We had Oakmont and Manoa at the two different parades, and it really showed that yeah, we are a community Havertown, but what makes us vital are the smaller areas where people really do get together and bond, and the people behind those groups, the civic associations, which are you know, sort of need more volunteers. Um, things happen locally, so people, please, your, the civic associations, join them, volunteer to help, whether it's for July 4th, whether it's luminaries at the holidays or Easter eggs or Halloween, whatever the event, uh, they need your help. Um, that's what really makes this, this area very special um, to be in. So please support your civic groups um, as much as you possibly can. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Lewis? Yeah, I was, uh, unfortunately, I was remiss uh, when Jan Marie was here um, in acknowledging her role in the preservation of open space and the development of the Correct Center. Um, Lois will recall this, and a lot of, some of you were on the board. In fact, Jimmy, if it weren't for Jimmy and uh, Ken Richardson and the board at that time, who had the vision to buy Hereford State, we wouldn't have that great asset, but. Um, well, my first tour of duty on this board was in 2004. The, that, that, the, the, the then current board um, 
was trying to basically develop the whole site. Uh, it was going to be completely uh, developed, uh, and, and they tried to show on maps that there were going to be ball fields when, in fact, they were going to be built, you know, built on steep slopes and there were going to be no ball fields. There were, was going to be no open space. And uh, fortunately, Steve, was we, we, um, we got control of the, of the board, and, and uh, it was actually a moving train. Uh, the decision was pretty well uh, done. It was pretty much a done deal. And it was because of people like Jan Marie Rushforth and Lucetta Oliver and others that who, uh, who stepped forward and really led, led the effort, uh, you know, helped this board um, uh, get that train back on the, going in the right direction. And she deserves a lot of credit for, uh, for her efforts. And she always did it in a classy, um, just with a smile on her face. And she was uh, an activist, uh, but, but in a cla very classy way. So I want to thank her for her efforts. Uh, the other thing is, um, in terms of um, uh, College Avenue update, we had a um, we had some setbacks there. As you as you drive by there, you can see that there's been a little activity, and the the easement issue is still um, unresolved. But I understand today that they're going to the contractor is going to try to work around those easements, and uh, the schedule is to take that bridge down in the next uh, by the end of July. So uh, they're trying to trying to start. Um, the, the taking down of the bridge while they work through the easement issues involving uh, Pico and Verizon and Comcast and other utilities. Uh, so anyway, uh, progress, slow progress, but uh, progress nonetheless. And um, looks like it's going to be a, you know, a February to March uh, time frame before that bridge is complete. And obviously they won't start the Arbor Avenue bridge until um, the College Avenue bridge is complete. And Commissioner McCluskey and I will be holding it a public meeting, some probably sometime in the late fall at this point, um, uh, to um, talk about the Ardmore Avenue Bridge and inform the public about uh, what that's going to entail and the dis disruption that's going to cause. So um, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Holmes. Great job. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, thank you. Um, last at the last meeting, I discussed um, <clears throat> the temporary relocation of the YMCA's camp um, to the uh, Chestnut Wald site. Um, for this summer due to construction work at the middle school. Um, at the risk of jinxing us, I'm happy to report that so far that has all gone smoothly and, and without incident. Um, uh, I thank uh, Chief Viola for the, um, uh, the extra attention that the, uh, the, the police department has paid there in the mornings and the afternoons. I appreciate the township's efforts and the YMCA's efforts to uh, do everything they could to make that um, as... Um, uh, to try to make that as least disruptive as possible to the neighborhood, and I, I think so far that's been a success. So thank you to all of you who, um, uh, whose efforts went into that. I also want to thank the South Ardmore Betterment Alliance, who uh, put on um, yet another very successful July 4th event, uh, starting with a parade at Chestnut Wald, and, um, uh, and then the neighborhood party at... Uh, at Elwell Field, and as Dan said so eloquently, it is the it is the collection of small neighborhoods and small events that make July Fourth such a special day um, in this township. And I once again had the um, opportunity uh, to judge the bike decorating contest, which any politician knows is a no-win situation. I gave out four blue ribbons and lost about 500 votes. So uh, um, that is a small price to pay for uh, enjoying and being a part of such a fun uh, neighborhood day for everybody. So thank you to that board. They do it. They're all volunteers. Steve Fisher was here earlier to discuss the environment. Um, and uh, I wish you were still here so I could thank him in person and all the other people who work with Saba. Um, to put together that great event. It's always a privilege to be there, and, um, uh, and we've been enjoying that for over a dozen years. Um, so that is, um, that is all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Mr. McGarity, I guess yes, this is going to be the uh, Cronkite report here. Well, Gene Angel had discussed what we're having on Brookline Boulevard, so that was out there. But what I'd like to also mention about Brookline Boulevard is some of the stores that are down there that don't really have a participation in this, but they're all together, working together with all the other business people to get this done mm -hmm. uh, in a timely fashion and all. And let me just mention the Miglio Insurance, the Cleaners, Debbie's Hair Salon, 
Joe's next door to Debbie's Hair Salon, <laughs> the Havertown Gym, and the St. Jude Shop. Now, they really don't have things, food to sell and things like that. And these are the type of people that support the others who are going to be successful in this day out, this night out that we have. And uh, if, we, if the weather holds up with us, from all indications, we may have up to 1,000 people there or better. So uh, I want to thank them on that. Also, I was with uh, Commissioner Connell uh, on the 4th of July. We were down at Grange Field, the Penfield Civic Association did a great job, and I'll let Mr. Connell talk about that. But basically, uh, I want to thank the men of the Brookline Fire Company because now I think it's been 73 years that they've been coming to Grange Field uh, each and every year. And uh, John Viola, Chief Viola, and his men go down there every year. And the kids get on the fire trucks and take rides. And Mr. Connell was very involved in that. So uh, I won't bring up any more. That's all. I'll let you mention all about Penfield Civic. I talked about it all. So. Is that it? That's it. <clears throat> yeah. Thank you. Commissioner. Mr. Wexler. Thank you. I'd like to Sorry. take the time. That the, the Township Line Project began the other evening with the milling of Township Line. I don't know if you recall, we had a lot of community meetings last year with both Upper Darby and State Representative Santoro about after we had uh, two fatalities on Township Line. The project began Saturday evening with the milling. It's going to start from the Drexel Line Shopping Center and go all the way down to Harding Avenue, which is right down by the Quarry Center. So Township Line will then become, in essence, a five-lane highway at that point, and a center turn lane is being striped in there. So the lanes are being narrowed, new warning signs and co traffic calming measures are being built, and the project should be done by the September time frame. Uh, I, I noticed today the milling, after the weekend, the milling is almost halfway done already. So they're going great guns with the milling and then the restriping will be done. Aqua's finished and, and uh, Pico's finished on Township Line. So that project, I'd like to put a shout out to Senator San, uh, State Representative Santoro, who, uh, who really grabbed the bull by the horns. This thing, Pico, uh, at the first meeting with PennDOT, Chief Viola was there, and they said it would probably be three to five years to make this thing come to fruition. And the uh, state representative stood up and said, that's not acceptable. And he persuaded Governor Wolf to fund the project in terms of about almost $2 million, $1.75 million. So it's from time of inception back in March to now, it's already in progress. Second thing, I'd like to thank the Hilltop Civic Association for their 4th of July. We had a great time. And, and Mr. Holmes, I'll give you a recommendation. You bring an extra box of blue ribbons and nobody goes away unhappy. So, well, they all uh, got Keep Larry so, Holmes commissioner pencils. <laughs> so they got that. Uh, but I'd like to thank the Bon Air and Manila Fire Companies. Uh, they support the parade along with the police department that day. And Bon Air hung around and, uh, and actually squirted the kids because it was hot down there. So thank you. And then... Last but not least, I, I had the privilege of serving on the Citizens Advisory Council with Jan Marie for a number of years prior to uh, the CREC and, and the reserve becoming a reality. And uh, all I can say is, is not thank you to her, but thank you for her. Uh, so thank you for Jan Marie for her service and for the, the good luck we've had to know her in, in her unlimited capacity uh, with all the energy that she's had over the years for the township. So. Thank, thank you, Lord, for her. That's all I can say. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner. Mr. Levin. Thank you. Um, I did want to touch on a few things. One is uh, with that climate change plan, we just, um, I was talking with Peter um, over, um, the last, over last week um, about rain gardens because a lot, you know, we think of, of ways we can um, keep emissions down, things like that, but we also have the stormwater issues which we have to deal with. So um, we need to think more about rain gardens, doing more than that. And I, I spent a good bit of time with Peter working uh, through some places that we can put more rain gardens and berms and things like that to control stormwater and to try to keep stormwater out of, uh, you know, put it back onto to people's properties and, and, uh, and have it soak into the ground rather than, than have flooding, uh, flooding issues. So. Uh, we need to deal with that. I <clears throat> uh, also want to thank Tom Kelly uh, and Tom Kelly Music for Life for the Irish Festival. What a great job that was. Um, it was a great time. I was there <clears throat> a good part of the day, and, um, and everybody had such a good time, uh, good music. Um, wanted to touch on Moonlight Dining Under the Stars on the Boulevard. Um, as Commissioner 
McGarity pointed out, uh, it's going to be a great event. Um, I, I'm predicting more than 1,000 people because we already have uh, some 750 reservations uh, across the board there. So, and a lot of people are coming in for, for the other uh, things. But I want to <clears throat> I want to emphasize what a great job, like Jimmy's saying, even um, um, owners who were not involved in in the Dining Under the Stars came to the committee meetings. They showed up. They helped out. They contributed money. Um, so people like Kathy Cleaners, like Jimmy was saying, they they all contributed money to help the this. Um, uh, to bring out uh, business on Brookline Boulevard, so not it's not just the the restaurants who are who are um, who are going to profit from this. Um, it is everyone is working together on Brookline Boulevard, and Tom Thornton, who is heading uh, the the Brookline Boulevard uh, Association, is really doing a fantastic job over there. Um, also, Jean Angel, who who works out all the logistics here, I, I work together with her to. Um, to get um, the chief and, and uh, public works and, and all those people who are working to get this done. It's not just, just we don't just show up. There's some uh, over 150 tables, 750 chairs that have to be set up, barricades, trash cans, um, the removal of these trash cans, uh, all that has to be set up, has to be taken down. She works through all those logistics. Um, and. It, Great job by John Viola and um, and Deputy Chief Hagan showing up at the meetings, working with us to um, to make this as smooth as possible. Um, also, Public Works has done a great job. They've moved trash cans here, trash cans there, back and forth, and recycle bins, and um, and they'll be helping us work through. Uh, but a big part of of this is volunteers. Volunteers are going to be picking up the trash. Volunteers are going to be going to be picking up the recycling. Um, so we need more volunteers to come out to help. Uh, you can join on the HPD, HPD's website. These are some great things happening in the community that you guys want to be part of. And uh, there'll be other events going on. We have another event coming up in April, um, which I'm not allowed to say until uh, after we get through this event. But uh, we're working on another event for Haverford Township. Uh, and we do need volunteers. Check the HPD's website. <coughs> Um, so uh, I want to, you know, thank everybody there. And uh, <clears throat> the uh, Manoa Civic Association had their Fourth of July parade. I'd like to thank Manoa Fire Company for coming out, as well as Lanark Fire Company at the Lanark parade. Um, they have two simultaneous parades going on in my ward, and uh, so I was at Manoa's this year, um, and it was a great time. They did a beautiful job. Molly over there and Chris Malay and. And, um, and Maria Pardini put this thing together and they did a fantastic job. It, it was their first year doing it and um, it, kids had a great time. Um, so uh, that's what I have there. And I also wanted to thank the first grade of Sacred Heart Church, um, their school that uh, sent me this, this letter. Um, Dear Mr. Oliva, thank you for letting us come to the Halford Township building and teaching us about the laws. It was great to meet you and learn about recycling um, and, and how ordinance has happened. Um, every year, um, uh, myself and Gloria Cagini, our executive uh, assistant, as well as the EMS, come here and, and the first graders come from Sacred Heart and we teach them what happens in this room, um, you know, how, um, how ordinances come up, resolutions, and uh, what the township does, recycling, everything. So we uh, had a great time with them, very funny, a lot of questions, and uh, Gloria does a fantastic job. And uh, they got to get in the ambulance and see that. They were more interested in that than what I was talking about, but um, so it was a good time. So thank you all, and I have nothing further. Thank you very much, Commissioner. <laughs> um, and then it always comes with me at the caboose. So. Uh, Chief, uh, vacation time of the year. There is a list for police check vacant houses. You know, okay. You go away on vacation. Tell your neighbor you're going away on vacation, please. I mean, we have some issues throughout the, the township. Burglaries happen. They happen in all townships. But you know what? When there's a vacant house, sometimes we kind of make it very easy to let the burglars know 
we're away because it looks like we're away. So please contact your neighbor to let them know, you know what, uh, if there's any papers that pile up, any packages that happen to come here, use my driveway. Whatever you can do to make my house look lived in is okay by me. But before you go away, please also contact the local police department. Um, that's at the 853 number, 1298? 610-853-1298. And request to be put on the vacant house check. So the police will come by. It's, it, put your lights on, timers, everything. It's that time of the year, so please pass it on. Um, also, I want to thank uh, Mr. Cleary's third grade class at Chatham Park. Uh, we had an opportunity to go down. Uh, Mr. Oliva and Mr. McGarrity, the, the, the police department was there. Public Works was there. Thank you very much for the police department. And Mr. Gentile, please express you know, uh, Public Works for, thing, for coming as well. Um, it is a great opportunity to get the youth of our community involved in any way we can. You know, we had a young man come up tonight and speak his piece. What a great thing that is to do, to get involved. Because let's face it, we've had our time in the barrel. Here we are. We're not getting any younger. So be an example and get, get, the, get the youth of our community involved. Thank you to Mr. Cleary for doing that uh, because a lot of questions and answers. I had to take a day off from work, but the thing is it was worthwhile. It was worth doing. Um, also, thank you, um, other ways to get involved. And our youth can also get involved in our civic associations. They're great associations. They're people that help out in the community that can do things that, you know what, it, it's, it, it doesn't add a burden to the taxpayer. The civic associations do it. So please uh, get involved. Thank you to the Penfield Civic Association. What a great time we had at the Chatham Park, or at, um, I'm sorry, at the Grange Field uh, with the Brookline Fire Company. The, the, thanks for still doing the rides too, uh, Chief, with the Brookline Fire Company. I think you're one of the last ones to do it, but all our volunteers, all our volunteer fire companies, they have families too, and they take the day to, to be involved to come out to these uh, Fourth of July festivities. And, uh, and you're right, Commissioner, we are a community of neighborhoods. What a great thing it is. That's what gives us that hometown feeling, that little town feeling. We all feel like we're a part of the little town. We're actually a huge town, fifth largest first class township in Pennsylvania but we still have that little town feeling. And I appreciate the, the Board of Commissioners for all the work that you do to make it feel that way, all the things you've done, especially this past 10 years, what have you. So thank you to our uh, civic associations. Penfield still has another event coming up. So please, support your civic associations. Get in touch with them. Like them on Facebook. They're, they're terrific organizations. And thank you to the community for making this Township, one of the best townships to live in and grow up in. Thank you very much. So there, with that, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. See you on August 4th or 7th and 14th.